Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. You are prepared. Don't put away your friend. Your weapon. The barrels of your Villiers 9mm pistol shine threateningly in the cold spring light. Wait. Your old friend has prepared you for this, at great cost to himself. Make sure you have the spirit bomb in your hand when shit goes south. This isn't the time for fear. Go. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. Shh. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. The mercenary tribunal. My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. He doesn't want to, but he must. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. A sound strategy. He's the leader. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. I think he's calmed down a bit. No, he didn't. He's about to open fire. He is. I was wrong. Fuck! Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. She doesn't seem to understand the severity of the situation. With a wordless gurgle. The killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the blue medicinal spirit in your hand seems to have a pulsating glow. It feels enticing somehow. All right, end game. Light me on fire and throw me in his face. Wait, it's a good thing you have an anthropomorphic petrol bomb. It really is, but you have to soften him up first. Present an argument. Even if it comes to a fight, it's a good idea to get under his skin first. No, please. Peace. It has worked this far. Start with the first idea you have. Move down from that. Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer, Hoan Cloven. He doesn't talk much. All of you cunts inside out. Rip you open! Perhaps it's for the best. Him not talking to 
too much. The gunner, the raddest, the killer. What do you think he does? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count little stick figures. 19, 20, 21. About 50 little stick figures. All of them black, plus two little white ones in the end. These men served in Semini, the native islanders. The two little white figures in the end are from when they moved to Rivershaw. They're recent. That's right. Plenty of kips here in Rivershaw, too. T, let's fucking do it. T. Easy. Easy now. Yeah? Who did that? You should implicate yourself. Throw yourself onto the embrasure. Chest first. No, wait! He didn't. You think this is... Funny. What if I just shot one of your pals here for fun? Huh? How about the kid? That'd be fucking funny. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead court marshal won't decide who. He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him all together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud in a public place. You're lying! DePaul heard it. You heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. Fucking liars! The shot rings in your ears. A low, tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flown over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> he isn't just boasting. He really doesn't care. Back out of this now, or it'll get bad. Fucking waste this fuck! Ignore her. She's not the main threat yet. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenner would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. I have some trivia, too. Get him interested in facts. Really, none of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. I am a Grinnell Major with over 15 years of live combat experience. When my colonel gets hanged by clay monkeys, I'd lead the platoon on a retaliation strike. Nah, I just have the biggest gun. Technically, the other man has the biggest gun. But we're beyond that now. King Reaper. You're right. But you see, I want it to end. Okay, it's not much, but he's thinking about something else, and his hand is off the gun. This did something. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Yeah, I don't fucking act so well. 
Laylee had a hard on for making faces with the natives. Fucking food aid shit. That shit is done now. Triggered. Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Click, click, click. A realization comes to you like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raoul Cortenar. The dead man's name is Elise Cortenar. He's brothers with the deceased. No, probably foster brothers. Elise was put into a foster home, remember? For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, all sentenced. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat into place by the same sick fuck. Beaten by a foster parent or someone on the farm? You don't know shit! Man's corporal, why don't you? You lost it. Quick. What do you mean, talker? We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic, a nice guy to be around. Yeah. He liked to chat up the natives, share leaflets, squeeze a bit of kid tass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. If Laylee was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. Who? Laylee. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked at his birth records. That was in there. And other things. They fucking put Laylee in a leaf compactor. And now these cunts finished the job. This real anguish in his voice. A drunken sadness suddenly engulfs him. Memories. It's a mind fuck, Corti. He wasn't put in a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. Major, permission to. Open fire. We can't have that. Interfere now. Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt or a hundred of them. Rude here. In your ship, I'm ready to fucking. He likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored, Laylee knew how to command. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh yeah. He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. But that didn't happen. Because hey, see Bill and Kipty the Kipped here. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you fox. Listen, man, we told you we... Told us what? What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fuck, you'll die first. Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down plots. Find his killer. Cop. His killer stands right there, shitting his pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting them. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Who the fuck is that? Classia, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! You know how much windows cost? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! We should have arrested her. You can feel 
how upset he is with himself, just for a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. shattering glass and a terrible roar. The fire draws in oxygen. The bomb hits the mercenary in the chest, swallowing him in flames as he staggers backward. In the fiery inferno, you see your tie, coiling around the man's neck. It is no longer horrific, but beautiful and pure. I only ever wanted you to have fun, Harry. My name, should you know it, is Jobson AS Men's Fashion Model, Colorful Tie, Catalog Number J327. One day a sad man walked into a clothing store. He looked really down, like he hadn't had fun in years. He needed someone to show him how to rock and roll again. Jobson AS Catalog Number J327 shone on the tie rack, trying to get his attention. The sad man picked it up and put it on. He looked at himself in the mirror, didn't smile. And from that moment on, we rode together. The rest of your clothes were still normal back then, but we took care of that soon enough. Truthfully, not a lot. I did everything a multi-pattern necktie can do to help a man. I mean, I tried to get you to do all the fun things. Drink beer, drink wine, drink cider. Go to parties with young people around and drink beer and cider. Do drugs too, so you don't fall asleep. You had some fun, but not enough to heal you! Your heart is broken, Bratushka, and it cannot be mended. Believe me, I've tried. No, you're going to be mowed down by gunfire from the two remaining marks. So no, not forever. You both did, Bratan. Deep down, you know it was both of you. No, no, it was her mostly. Don't lie to him, Nikti. This guy, well... His face has cracked open into a scream of terror. It looks like he's performing some sort of a shamanistic dance that requires you to be on fire. Yeah, his body contorts in a very disturbing manner. There's no mincing words with this one. He's dying a horrible, painful death as you're talking to your tie in your head. Smells like a steak on the grill the burning flesh in your nostrils. It's good to see you still have capacity for compassion, my friend. Deep down, you are a good man. See you on the other side. Harry, for God's sake, watch out! To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. An Easter ARFA-7, built for taking out light armored vehicles. It will devastate you. From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rude. He's trying to find a straight line of sight before the rifleman can take you out. In the background, the leader is still on fire. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it, his eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. 0.4 seconds remain. There are six little black dots in the tip of the barrel, like a honeycomb. This is a knock cannon. It shoots six rounds in one pull of the trigger. Absolute destruction. Is there anything, anything, we could use to protect this frail body? That gun will tear us to pieces. He's drunk. Drunk fighters overcorrect. Move right, he aims further right. Get him to overshoot. Just dodge the first shot, and the second will be easier. Drunks are quick to anger, and make mistakes. Titus, behind you, must be aiming at him right now. Don't forget. There's additional reinforcements. Just survive this. 
You leap left, a swarm of angry men passes mere millimeters from your side, tearing fabric off your coat. Feels like the lightest of tucks. The man tilts his head, trying to see through the clearing smoke for the next shot. Watch out, to your left. Paul is about to take a shot too, at Kim. God, please. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. An extremely difficult shot. He has to. The rifleman will fire at you again. Two shots ring at once. One from the lieutenant's pistol, and the other from De Paul's. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. The helmet looks like the face of an ancient god of war, crying blood. Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh God, watch out. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through the burning meat and the flames. With his face boiling off, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. The look of vengeance framed by melting skin. This is the last thing he will do on earth. But he will do it. He will end you. Here it comes. Death. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you got. Most of what's down there. You can also feel the bone where the bullet went in. Something very sharp, like broken teeth under your fingers. Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Stay with me. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant, and a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away, almost gone, when suddenly you sense something behind him, a slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles and your eyes are full of fear. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim, then the whole world. This 
is death. One more door, baby. One more door. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. Sunrise, Arabella. Yes, the joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. The close proximity of death must have made the lieutenant contemplate his life choices. He's done with the jacket. It's not ouch time yet. You just go to Druamine pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. Druamine? Then it's not that bad. Neither surgical nor organ damage bad. But still, under the counter bad. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take Druamine and curse. And drink water. Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. Cops like it. The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. I think we may have held it off, for now. Barely. Yes, we have also completely failed. But that's okay. What happened? He threw an improvised petroleum bomb at the Major. A firefight ensued. He does not answer, and searches for something in his coat pocket instead. Very. He died in the hospital. A bloodstained killer. You are an officer of the RCM. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He missed, or you dodged. Then I shot and wounded him while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. Glenn did not survive. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Yes, he's still alive too. You were bleeding out by then. I think you said something about your wife and you warned me. I was able to disarm one of them, the pole, before she got a jump on me. Thank you. I killed her. And that's what happened. He nods. 
This is the one. The poll was the last today. Everhart had their bodies returned to Cronel for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe, maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. Four. Glenn, Theo, Schenke and Angus. The fat one, he took a lot of bullet. All. Yes, officer. Seven people are dead. It's not a success. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive, both of us. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. His smoking, his hunched back. You have it worse, but he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your tie. The outer side, thankfully, no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrom. We will see. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become a psycho locomotor. Good. You'll need to be. Whatever that is. No. The man and the woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. I'm sure they're worried about you. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? I don't know. He may have some idea, but he's not going to get into it with you. That's between you and them, he thinks. I did. No need. Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Easy now. How are you? Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Vifreiter. I honestly don't know. Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbor's in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. Joyce has left too, thanks to our meddling. I don't know what to think. It might not have been a bad idea. There is a pin somewhere in the machine. Something is keeping Connell from sending in a death squad. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Guard confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. I don't know. I think your incredibly dangerous theory about you being the killer was incorrect, however. There is not one piece of evidence to support it. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. That does make some sense. What? Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to catch everything. He's wrong. Okay. I don't know. That's been there for years. Yes. God cursed the footprints, not solving the case for us. Au diable. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? See? There's that. You can do ballistics. It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around. We found one. 
all completely unusable. It's precisely how easy it is to find one that makes the bullet useless. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Ravachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. No need to be melodramatic. What is? Something. He does not know what to reply. Looks out of the window, then back at you. It's morning outside, you think. I'm afraid we may not be able to locate communism, detective, on account of it being dead. Ideology does not have anything to do with the murder investigation at hand. I'm sorry, it does not. He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. It really is very hard. He sounds surprisingly weary. That concussion must be making him dizzy. I don't think so. Are you ready to limp? Good. Where do you want to limp to? A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The jor aluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold. A red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut. Plucked like a string by the gust. Let's do that. We can start upstairs in Classius' bedroom with your ballistics idea. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. <laughs>